Good evening and a warm welcome to everyone on the Q3 and 9-month FY24 earnings conference call. On the earnings call today, I am joined with my colleagues, Mr. Ayush Shah, non-executive director, Mr. M. M. Nanda, head of GEAR division, Mr. P. K. Basin, head of MHC division, Mr. Kamlesh Shah, group CFO, and Narsiman Raghunathan, CFO. We have uploaded the press release and earnings presentation on the stock exchanges and company's website. And I hope everyone had an opportunity to go through the same. I will start with industry and business overview and then we'll hand over the call to Kamlesh, our group CFO, to discuss the financial performance of the company for the quarter and nine months ended December 2023. The global economy has shown some signs of recovery, such as easing inflationary pressures and advancements in artificial intelligence. Despite these positive developments, the pace of global trade remains sluggish, financial conditions remain stringent, and widening of geopolitical tensions with ongoing conflicts such as Russia's Ukraine war, strained China-US relations, and notably the conflict between Israel and Hamas contribute to the complex global trade and supply chain. The IMF anticipates a slight decline in global economic growth in 2024, projecting a rate of 2.9%, down from 3% the previous year. On an optimistic note, the Indian economy demonstrates resilience in the face of global uncertainty. According to the IMF, India's GDP is estimated to grow at 6.3% propelled by heightened domestic demand, increased exports, presence, and robust expansion in both the manufacturing and services sectors. Moving to the business overview, Elicon Engineering stands tall as the integrated solution provider leading its way in manufacturing of industrial gears and material handling equipment, serving as one-stop val valuable solution provider to diverse set of customers and industries. Being a pioneer in the industrial gears, we have positioned ourselves as one of the largest manufacturers of industrial gears in Asia. The company's leadership position can be attributed to its diversified product portfolio catering to multiple industries, best-in-class quality products with low lead time, customized solution provider to different class of customers, and state-of-the-art in-house R&D capabilities to enhance and develop new and improved solutions for the customers. The company remains steadfast in commitment of exceptional quality and timely deliveries. To stay at the forefront of technological advancements, we consistently introduce new products with enhanced technology, ensuring best-in-class products in the industry. Our team is devoted towards continuous improvement and addition of product portfolio, particularly in gearbox technology with a focus on delivering cutting-edge solutions, recognition from our valued customers and other distinguished acknowledgements stands as a testament of our exceptional quality we consistently deliver. Now moving on to the quarterly segmental developments, firstly on gear, gear division. Our ability to evolve with the changing industry needs steering towards tailor-made solutions has enabled us to expand our wallet share among existing customers while successfully onboarding new clients across geographies. <clears throat> our, demos our domestic operations have demonstrated robust demand across diverse sectors 
such as steel, cement, power and sugar, with a promising outlook for the future. We continue to maintain a leadership position in the domestic market. Our strategic approach involves actively seeking opportunities in niche industries. Talking on the overseas performance, we are delighted to share that we have signed four more OEM contracts, bringing our total to 10 OEM contracts in the overseas market. This underscores the growing acceptance of our products and high level of service we provide. Our commitment to growth is evident by continuous expansion of our network, rigorous efforts for business development, and intensified branding efforts. Coming to material handling division, we would like to highlight that the Indian CapEx cycle is on an upward trajectory and continues to show a positive outlook. A surge in order inflow for the supply of equipments is a result of order wins across diverse sectors. Notably, also like to highlight that we have recently won orders in the steel and cement sectors amounting to rupees 173 crores. Our performance in segment has been complemented by a growing aftermarket business. Through improved process efficiency and a more favorable product mix, we are seeking an uptick in profitability. Moving to the financial aspects, we had mentioned our revenue guidance of rupees 2,000 crores for FY24, which we are expected to reach in spite of challenges due to current geopolitical scenario, as well as softening of the steel-based raw material prices. We expect our EBITDA margins and in absolute terms, will remain 24% plus. We shall provide FY25 revenue and EBITDA margin guidance in Q4 FY24 earnings call due to the current geopolitical scenario. General election in India intensifying ongo ongoing West Asia unrest impacting supply chain and customer sentiment. However, we are committed to providing further clarity on this guidance as we gain more insight during the next quarter. Our commitment remains steadfast in adapting to external factors and ensuring trans transparent communication as we navigate these challenges. Lastly, at Elecon, we take every possible step to create a greener future and put emphasis on sustainability. We believe we have the power to drive positive change, contribute to a more sustainable future, and create long-term value for our stakeholders. With this, I would like to hand over the call to Kamlesh Shah, our group CFO, for financial highlights for Q3 and nine month FY24. Over to you, Kamlesh. Thank you, sir. Good evening, everyone and a very warm welcome to our Q3 and 9 month FR24 earnings call. I will now take you through the highlights of financial results for Q3 and 9 months FR24. Our consolidated revenue from operations for the quarter ended December 2023 stood at rupees 474 crores as compared to rupees 389 crores in the same quarter last year, a growth of 22% on year on year basis. The domestic market accounted for 73% of the revenue and balance coming from overseas market. EBITDA for Q3 FY24 stood at Rs. 120 crores, growing 36% from Q3 FY23. The EBITDA margin for the quarter stood at 25.4% owing to better product mix and process improvement initiatives undertaken. Tax margin for Q3 FY24 stood at 19.1% as compared to 16.1% in Q3 FY23, registering a significant improvement of 300 basis points. For nine months ended December 2023, consolidated revenue from operations stood at Rs. 1,373 crores, 
registering a growth of 24% on a year on year basis ebitda margin stood at to be 339 crores registering a growth of 38% as compared to 9 months fy23 ebitda margin for the period stood at 24.7% the pat for the period stood at 252 crore a growth of 49% on a year on year basis moving to the segment by performance gear division accounted for 86% of the revenue while 14% was contributed by mh division in q3 fy24 in 9 month fy24 87% of the revenue was contributed from gear division while 13% was contributed by the mh division take talking about the gear segment consolidated revenue from operations to that is 409 crore as compared to 329 crore a growth of 24% a revenue from 9 months ended december 2023 stood at this 1192 crore up by 26% on yoy basis the ebit for the quarter stood at rupees 111 crore impressive year on year growth of 48% the ebit margin for q3 fy24 stood at 27.2% compared to 22.9% reflecting a sustainable improvement of 435 basis points ebit for 9 month fy24 stood at rupees 310 crore as against rupees 210 crore in 9 month fy23 reflecting a growth of 48% on yoy basis the ebit margin for 9 months and date december 2023 stood at 26% registering a growth of 380 basis points The order intake for nine months FY24 stood at rupees 1,189 crore, up by 16 percent on YOY basis. Order in hand is rupees 572 crore as on December 31, 2023, highlighting the demand across sectors. <coughs> Moving on to MHC division, revenue for the quarter stood at rupees 65 crore as compared to rupees 60 crore in corresponding quarter last year, growth of 8 percent YOY. Yeah, the revenue for 9 months ended December 2020 is stood at rupees 181 crore registering a growth of 14% on yoy basis ebit for q3 fy24 stood at rupees 12 crore registering a growth of 38% yoy debit margin stood at 18.5% as against 14.6% in q3 fy23 a substantial improvement of 319 basis point on year on year basis The debit margin for 9 months and at December 2023 stood at 20.6%, an improvement of 1030 basis point on a YOY basis, primarily on account of better product mix. The order inflow during the 9 months and it stood at rupees 249 crore as compared to rupees 177 crore in 9 months FY23, up by 41% on a YOY basis. The open orders, as on 31st December 2023, stood at rupees 219 crore. Furthermore, our total consolidated order book, including both divisions, experienced order inflow of rupees 1438 crores during nine months FY24, and the total open orders, as on 31st December 2023, stood at rupees 791 crore. Now, highlighting a few developments during the nine months and at December 2023. as mentioned previously we are pleased to announce that we have signed up for more oem business agreement this brings our total overseas oem business agreement to an impressive number that is 10 making significant progress in the expanding our partnership we anticipate commencement of commercial production in fy25 mg division continues to win big orders for product supply We have recently received two orders from steel uh, from steel sector and one order for cement sector, aggregating to rupees 173 crore. We continue to make progress in recovering funds through arbitration awards. As of 31st December 2023, we have received rupees 37.2 crores out of total awards of rupees 63 crore. Negotiations for the remaining amount are currently in progress. Furthermore, we have initiated fresh arbitration proceedings with a total value of rupees 31 crore during Q1 FY24, outcome of which may take one to two years. We are confident of a positive outcome. On this, I would like to open the floor for Q&A. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, 
you may press star and 2. Participants are requested to use answers while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Aditya Rati from Equitas Investments. Please go ahead. Thank you for the opportunity, sir. So my first question relates to the Red Sea crisis that is going on and the impact that it carries on the delay in shipment and cost. Uh, I would say that right now we are just shipping the the uh, orders that we have received. Yes, uh, it is taking us, uh, our products are reaching two weeks later to our clients in Europe. And uh, if it is United States also, it would be two weeks additional time. Uh, though the customers are complaining that it is taking two weeks longer, However, it has not seen a significant impact on reduction of orders or cancellation of orders. Sir, does it carry any cost impact relating to it? Uh, cost impacts are definitely coming in. We are transferring those costs to the uh, clients in general because um, considering the fact that the freight as it is was being paid, it is not inclusive in the price of the uh, gears. So uh, they they are paying the extra cost. Um, no one likes it, but still they are paying it. Okay, okay, sir. And sir, just now you mentioned that we still hold the revenue guidance for 2000 crore for financial year 24. Given that that in nine months we have clocked close to 1370 crores of revenue and there is a continuous decrease in the uh, volume, order book volume from transmission division. So do we still hold that 2000 crore revenue guidance? Yes, as of now we are still continuing with 2000 crores. We are reasonably confident. However, as uh, I have mentioned also in my speech, that there are challenges because of the uh, reduction in steel prices, as well as the uh, geopolitical uh, situation uh, existing today with two wars going on and the Red Sea issue. So uh, we are reasonably confident because we are going to try our very best to reach uh, the golden figure of uh, 2,000 crores and uh, we will continue to strive for that. Okay. And so my last question relates to the extra four OEMs that we have signed overseas. Sir, any estimated business volume guidance for that, like you mentioned for the six overseas, the last time that 5.5 .5 million euros would be coming from that? Yes. Uh, We are anticipating 6 million uh, euros of business coming in from it. However, it is difficult to say right now because uh, once our, uh, you know, right now we are in the testing phase where we would give them prototypes and they would put them on test. After which, uh, you know, the existing uh, supplier, his scope would reduce and ours would increase. So over a period of time, it will keep on increasing. So it is very difficult to ascertain. However, our rough estimates are about 6 million euros. Does the 6 million is incremental for that 4 OEMs or this is of the entire 10 OEMs that we have signed? It is all 10 OEMs to start with. And then as I told you, over a period of time, it will keep on increasing. Okay. And there any idea on when do we plan to commercialize it? Uh, 2025. Okay. Thank you so much. Sir. Q3, we are expected to start the commercial production. Commercial production will be uh, in Q3, uh, 2025. However, uh, as I told you, 6 million, it will take about 12, 12 months to. Uh, okay. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you.
Our next question is from the line of Kashyap Javeri from MK Investment Managers. Please go ahead. Hello. Yes. Yeah, um, sir, congratulations on the great set of numbers. A um, couple of questions from my side. Uh, point number one, uh, you know, you also you highlighted about, uh, you know, the, the scope of work from uh, 10 overseas OEMs that you expect uh, at about $6 million eventually. Uh, in light of the fact that our guidance over the next uh, few years is uh, revenue share of 50-50 uh, between Expo, uh, how much can eventually this uh, 10 OEMs uh, add in that 50-50 target, uh, let's say over the next about 3-4 years? Uh, second question is, uh, you highlighted about some of the, uh, you know, uh, um, vulnerability or volatility in terms of our overseas business, uh, but in terms of domestic business in FY25, uh, you know, how are uh, things uh, looking like there in terms of revenues? And third question is on our MHA margins, uh, which now are almost inching very much near to our, uh, you know, transmission division margins. Uh, so on a steady state basis, if there are no more write-offs in line with our strategy of not taking PSU business, uh, are there sort of margins which are sustainable in MHA business? Uh, let me, <laughs> you've asked so many questions, so let me start right from the beginning. Um, first of all, uh, yes, the... Uh, uh, 10 OEMs would constitute about uh, 6 million euros to start with. Okay. We presume that we will reach that figure within uh, 12 months of commencement of uh, normal production after the prototypes have been accepted. And uh, uh, we also see a good traction among our marketing people abroad, uh, not only OEM but replacement business because right now the uh, uh, companies do not want to invest a sizable amount in new uh, machinery and equipment. So they're more interested in uh, continuing with the old equipments and still updating them to some extent. Therefore, there's a good potential for replacement business that we see right now. So considering all that factor, uh, we are confident that if things go positively, we will be able to achieve our targets of 2000 growth. And um, uh, as long as material handling division is concerned, uh, the margins are almost reaching close to the gear division. We expect those margins to be sustained over a period of time. Uh, because uh, we are picking and choosing the customers and we are picking and choosing orders uh, where we get uh, reasonably good margins. Uh, and therefore, though our turnover has dropped from the initial stages uh, when we were doing contracting business, but uh, we are focusing more on the bottom line. So we believe that uh, on the MHA side, are these margins a function of purely operating leverage, or uh, you know, in in the market there is a demand supply mismatch also, uh, which is helping us uh, price them better? No, it is the, uh, the it's not the uh, mismatch. It is basically our business constitutes uh, replacement, which is the after sales as well as. Uh, new requirements for uh, new projects which are coming up. Uh, so uh, we are we are confident that we will be able to maintain those margins. And just in continuation of the previous question about European OEMs, uh, 6 million euros is the big, uh, you know, order value possible or this is, you know, where, you, where we start and eventually this 6 million euros can be uh, in OEM space can be meaningfully higher number? Uh, it is a starting figure. Uh, we believe that it will uh, open up more avenues for us with the 10 OEM contracts that we have signed, plus it will also open up, uh, uh, you know, doors for their competitors to whom we can also deal with. 
So all in all, uh, we believe that over a period of time, this six million will expand to to a reasonably large number. Domestic market, any commentary for next year? Uh, domestic market, I believe, is holding grounds, and uh, the way things are going, I'm reasonably positive that uh, it'll it'll keep on growing at least at the six six plus percent uh, GDP growth, which we uh, expect it to uh, continue, at least for uh, another one or two years, if not more. Uh, we, we are seeing a good amount of traction in our business, especially in uh, cement and steel. And we believe that uh, that may rub off to even uh, various other industries. Sure, sir. Uh, thank you, sir. That's it from my side. And next year, even sugar looks uh, to be promising. Okay. 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 Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Before we take the next question, a reminder to all participants that you may press star and 1 to ask a question. Our next question is from the line of Garvid Goyal from Envesh Analytics. Please go ahead. Hi. Uh, am I audible? Yes. Yeah. Uh, good evening, sir, and congrats for a good set of numbers. Uh, my question is, uh, do you see any headwinds or any uh, slower growth rate in FY25, given that uh, those uh, geopolitical tensions you mentioned, uh, including those uh, Red Sea issues and falling order book in the gear division? Um, I have a different approach to those two things. I believe the worst has already happened, and now things will start improving, because uh, if you look at the Russia-Ukraine war, how long can it further last? Okay. It can't last forever. Uh, similar is the situation with uh, the Hamas war. And if the Hamas war uh, gets diluted, then the Red Sea issue also should get diluted. So uh, I am reasonably positive that over a period of time, uh, we, have already, we are already seeing the worst scenario. Hopefully, things will improve. Okay, sir. And uh, the presentation, uh, sorry, uh, that is answered. Uh, one question is uh, particularly on the railways and metro segment. As far as I remember, in Q1 FY24 phone call uh, segment uh, for manufacturing gears through global partnerships, we are uh, we are trying to enter into a uh, railways and metro metro segment. So, can you elaborate on the opportunities that the company forces in this partnership? Uh, we we are still pursuing. We have given. Uh, um, trial uh, uh, co components as well as uh, products to the uh, OEMs. However, uh, the uh, process is a slow process which is continuing. As of now, uh, it is it is going extremely slow. But we are hopeful that we will be able to improve the scenario in the future. Okay. And on the material handling equipment side, so have there been any orders from railways for product side like uh, wagon tripler? Yes, uh, they happen to come in on a continuous basis uh, from various clients which are from the cement power sector as well as steel. So that is an ongoing uh, product that we keep on selling. Understood, sir. And on the export front, uh, currently our export percentage is 27. So, have the, and you have the guidance for export of uh, 50% by uh, 2030. So, to which major countries in the com uh, company currently targeting? It's difficult to say because, as I told you, we have a focus more on the United States and Northern America. Uh, we also see a good traction in South America. Uh, Europe is also showing promise. So it is difficult to say and it will vary from year to year. So uh, the intention is that uh, you keep on uh, selling products in various countries. And if you do not focus only on a particular region, it is better because that will help you 
uh, hedge well against recession when uh, a recession hits India. Because then uh, your 40 to 50 percent of your turnover is coming in from exports. And hopefully, while India goes into recession, uh, hopefully there are good times in other countries of the world. Understood, sir. And on the order book front, uh, currently we do have, you know, have an open order book of somewhere around 800 PR. So, how do you see the order book shaping up in the upcoming quarters? Uh, normally, what happens is by the year end, uh, you see an increase or a surge coming through. Uh, so, uh, we are hopeful that the figures will improve over a, over in the last quarter. That's that's it for my sector. All the best for the future. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Mudit Kabra from Ilara Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Uh, first of all, congratulations on uh, OEM additions. Mr. Kabra, may we request you to use your handset, please? Is it better now? Yes, sir. Please go ahead. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, uh, firstly, congratulations on OEM additions in your Thank you. Um, could you tell us which are the sectors where we have added these uh, four new OEMs? So these are from packaging, steel, and plastic industry. Okay. Um, and uh, apart from that, sir, uh, if we uh, um, add up uh, Q2 and Q3 inflows this year and last year in the industrial segment, we see there is a flatness in the, in the quantum of order inflow. And we also, uh, if if I can recall, in last uh, Q in the, in this Q2, we were we mentioned that there is some spillover in order inflows. So is it fair to assume that the growth in inflows in industrial segment this quarter Q3? Is uh, uh, is majorly on account of the spillover which is uh, getting uh, through in Q3. Sorry, uh, would it be possible for you to repeat that because uh, somewhere down the line we could not hear it properly. Okay, okay, um, sir. If we add up Q2 and Q3 in closes in this year and the last year, it is largely flat. And uh, in last quarter Q2 FY24, we mentioned that there is a spillover because of delay in export order inflows. So, is it fair to assume that the order inflow in the industrial segment this quarter is on account of the uh, those orders coming in this quarter, like the spillover coming in Q3? No. Uh, these are fresh orders. Yes. Um. Okay. See, our deliveries are extremely fast. So, uh, the time that we take to process and execute uh, is is very fast. So, uh, you know, you see a, a big uh, consumption that takes place. Okay, and similarly... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, continue. No, please go ahead. Yeah, okay. And similarly, there is no uh, impact on revenue recognition also in this quarter due to the spillover impact? No. No, there is no. Uh... Okay, got it. Uh, lastly, sir, uh, on the market share um, uh, in Q3 uh, versus last year Q3 uh, in the organized industry years? Generally, we don't do on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis. We, uh, we uh, work out our market on an annual basis Okay. Because what happens, some of the, uh, you know, figures are not available on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis. Got it, sir. Got it. And uh, and uh, do we have the uh, revenue mix between the customized and the standard product this quarter? Yeah, this quarter, 55% is from engineer product, that is customized product, and 45% from CAC product. Perfect. Thank you so much, sir, uh, for this information. Thank uh, you. All the best. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to ensure that the management is able to address questions from all participants in the conference, please limit your questions to one or two per participant. Should you have a follow-up question, we would request you to rejoin the queue. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Ashutosh Garut from Ambit GPC PMS. Please go ahead. Hello, sir. I'm audible. <coughs> Yes, yes, sir. Please go ahead. Oh, yeah. yeah, hi. 
so uh, first of all congratulations for uh, for a good set of numbers so my question is slightly broad based so just wanted to understand we have seen the last whole decade as far as electron engineering is concerned the top line has hovered around 12 we can't hear you now i think uh, you got disconnected okay am i audible now yeah yeah now, yeah. yeah 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 sorry i was saying that we have seen that the top line for electron engineering has been hovering around 1500 or crores to 1200 or crores for the whole decade and now we have seen a uh, recent few quarters of good traction so just wanted to understand yes you mentioned some kind of uh, caution in the near term for because of the geopolitical aspects but from the next 3 to 4 years perspective do you think that we are really getting into a capex cycle which is much more sustainable because what we are seeing that even your operating margins have improved dramatically in the last 2 years so just want me to have a broad sense on the next 3 4 years journey going ahead and then maybe i can come on my second question see uh, if you look at it uh, from where we started we started where uh, material handling and the gear business used to be 50-50 okay today uh, the material handling business is hardly uh, less than 20% and uh, the balance is gears so there has been a tremendous shift in the uh, in the turnover uh, uh, coming from material handling as well as gears and the gear has always been giving us better margins up till now and in mhe because of our change in strategy from contracting business to uh, product selling as well as uh, the after sales market so uh, we have been able to uh, reduce the top line but slowly and gradually we want to ensure that the bottom line is extremely healthy just like what you would find in gears so the whole uh, transformation has taken place and slowly and gradually over a period of time we have been able to increase the turnover of both uh, gears and material handling with high profitability going forward the way we see it is the domestic traction plus our focus on exports the export focus our uh, tie ups with oems and other uh, uh, possible companies in europe as well as united states would give us substantial traction going forward and we believe that we will be able to sustain the growth uh, there is a constant uh, challenge which exists today in europe and united states where their local costs are going up tremendously and where they would like to offload various products to the uh, to the companies in asia and that is where we see a good potential coming our way and that is the reason we are confident that we will be able to sustain this growth over a period of time plus uh, we have not yet as a company or as a group looked at inorganic uh, growth there again the potential also is high okay because there are companies uh, abroad especially in the western world where uh, they have issues of margins the margins are negligible and uh, where unless they bring in a foreign investor from the far east or asia uh, for them to sustain becomes difficult so uh, this scenario is uh, very favorable to us and we see a great opportunity going forward okay great sir thanks thanks for that uh, elaborate answer and just coming to the near term so when we are talking about 2000 crores of uh, top plan for this financial year so that actually i mean some of my fellow callers i mean i also wanted to understand the same thing so are we expecting a decent amount of execution in the q4 because at that rate we should be clocking in the excess of our around 600 crore kind of a top line 
So if you can just throw some color uh, on, is there some delay in execution from this quarter to the next quarter or any other aspect which is playing out here? See, uh, I always say that mechanical engineering companies are like the uh, T20 teams because the last five overs are very critical. Similarly, Q4 for all the engineering companies, the turnover always jumps up <coughs> to a large extent. So that is the reason why uh, we believe that, um, you know, going forward, we will be able to do a much higher turnover in the last quarter. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, and all the best, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, in the interest of time and fairness to all participants, may we request participants to limit their questions to one or two per participant. Should you have a follow-up question, we would request you to rejoin the queue. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Sunil Kotari from Unique PMS. Please go ahead. Uh, thanks for opportunity. Congratulations, President. That was a good number. Thank you. Uh, sir, but just one thing I wanted to understand, the, the way power sector is investing now, uh, thermal power, uh, government is very keenly want to expand coal mining, coal gasification. So how internally we we are prepared? Because we have uh, stopped this EPC that I understand, but in terms of product, our capability, our uh, team building, so on MAG, how do you want to prepare yourself? Because the opportunity will be definitely there. Yes, you are absolutely right, Sunil Bhai. Um, the opportunities now are coming up, and they are coming up in uh, a slightly different way than before. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, I completely agree with you that India will not be able to uh, completely move away from... Uh, coal and uh, mining, especially coal mining, and therefore the potential uh, not only exists in uh, mining coal, but also in the power sector, uh, and uh, we are uh, tightening up our belts because, as you know, we were uh, quite largely dependent on the power sector, especially in material handling. So uh, we look upon it as an opportunity, and uh, we are uh, uh, putting up a team together to to evaluate and execute this as and when the opportunity arises. Thank you. Uh, and sir, one more question is on this uh, internal development on some different type of gears. We were, uh, I think, uh, developing speed gears. So. And many internal things we do always continuously. So on those things, if uh, on transmission side, if you can talk whatever uh, qualitative aspect of uh, Elicon internally, we are what we are doing. Yes, uh, Elicon is continuously developing uh, not only new products but also new lines uh, for the future. Uh, high speed is one of them. Okay, uh, where uh, we have internally uh, put up an entire program where we had uh, involved consultants and guides who helped us develop all this. Uh, we have successfully developed it. I cannot name the, uh, or cannot give you the names, but uh, we have successfully developed uh, products for uh, some very important customers mm -hmm. and we believe that will give us a good uh, uh, you know business going in the future mm -hmm. uh, this is as long as high speed gears are concerned we have developed also very special kind of couplings uh, which we will be putting up in the market very very soon so there are new uh, aspects that we continuously keep on uh, uh, striving to develop and uh, put them in the, on the market because that is the way to go forward. Uh, we have been doing this in the past and we will continue to do in the future. And uh, some or the other, sometimes uh, you hit a lottery with it, which means uh, though the potential may be 
low to start with, but uh, it gives you tremendous opportunities in the near future. Right, sir. Thank you very much and wish you good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Akash from the Lal and Rocha of Stockbroking. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, uh, very good evening, sir, and uh, that's a great set of us all. So, my first question to you would be on the capacity utilization that uh, we have operated at in this quarter. Uh, capacity utilization 76% is approximately 76%. Uh, okay, sir. And sir, uh, uh, what would be our scope uh, to improve from here? How? What would be our peak in terms of utilization? See, uh, I would not put it as uh, a cutoff uh, area because today Elicon is uh, doing almost, I would say, eighty to ninety percent of the uh, manufacturing in house. So if you do subcontracting, the potential would be even larger. Okay, but because of uh, maintenance of quality, high standards, plus uh, you know our own capability to do things, uh, we have been doing them in house. But if you uh, you know require uh, subcontracting, can also increase the capacity to a very very large extent. I would say 80-85% would be a reasonable amount internally to pursue. And as I told you, subcontracting, uh, even additional capex which we are doing uh, over a period of time, all this would increase the capacity. Uh, got it, sir. So if you could give some color on the capex that we are planning to do uh, in the balance part of this year and in the next couple of years. Sorry, uh, can you repeat that, please? Uh, if you could give some color on the capex that we are planning to do uh, in the next in the coming quarter and as well as in FY25. This year we are already spelled out a capex of 100 crore, and we are just going to achieve the capex uh, out of nearly 80 to 90 crore rupees of, from this year. And if you see over the period of three years, we have spelled out our capex plan is 300 crore. In the three phases, 100 crore we already spelled out and we are doing now. Another 100 crore and then the next 100 crore will be based on the revenue estimation. We are just going to implement that. And further, we, are, we may require to accelerate that capex considering the uh, long lead time for supply of you know equipment, which is a sophisticated and the automatic equipment software. See, uh, okay. approximately it works out to be 100 crores per year capex for the next three years. And uh, this is going to be done from our own internal resources. There is going to be no external bubble. Okay. Um, as well as, as I told you, that would not only increase the capacity, but also would be to improve uh, the uh, the quality and to sustain the uh, productivity that we have today or even better. Got it, sir. So, sir, out of the 100 crores for this year, we have just done around 26 crore for the 9 months, right? So, balance is going to be done in a few quotes. Yes, some are already done and because some are, you know, given the advance to the supplier, where the machines are expected the delivery of that, in this Q4, and some of them are in the next year Q1. Total, we already spent 52 crore. Got it. Got it. And one more question for me. I request you to rejoin the question queue for more questions, sir. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Gujjan Kabra from Nevishai. Please go ahead. Uh -huh. Congratulations to the entire team for a good set of numbers. So my first question is Ma'am, uh, sorry to interrupt. May I request you to use your handset, please? Yeah. Is it fine now? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. yeah, much better. Much better. Yeah, thanks. So I uh, wanted to understand that um, for the next year, the, you know, uh, with the current demand environment and the inflow that you see, 
are we uh, like can we expect around 20 25% of the growth that we have been doing since last one year uh, one two years and we can continue doing that with the current capacity and the demand scenario so what's your take on that see because of the uh, geopolitical situation uh, we uh, are assessing it uh, uh, very minutely and plus uh, we normally do this exercise in the last quarter <coughs> so this exercise is it will be done shortly and we will be coming up with our projections for the next year and the tentative projections for the next to next year in uh, the next uh, uh, con call that we do uh, in the last quarter after the last quarter Further to add, because this is the general election period that as such we are aware, and mm -hmm. considering the other geopolitical scenarios and general election in India, some, you know, the process will be slowed down administratively. Mm -hmm. We are just putting the, you know, we are fine-tuning the numbers and we'll just work out with the, you know, a more accurate number in our Q4 earnings call. Okay, so next quarter would be a better time for you yeah. to guide yeah. us. Yeah, correct. Okay. So next question I had is how much is the after sales service in the MHE division? So suppose if you're doing around 200-250 crores in a year on the MHE side in terms of revenue, then what's the after sales that we have every year? What's the percentage of that? In MHE we have, uh, you know, if you see nine months, we have did 39% is from aftermarket. So 39% is aftermarket, but I'm asking if some, if suppose for example, if you execute around 250 crores of the revenue, uh, if you do around 250 crores of revenue in the energy division, then hmm. how much of that revenue is after sales that, you know, percentage of the total order that you execute comes in form of after sales service? Is that a parameter to understand is what I wanted to understand? Because uh, in material handling equipment, some more, most of the things are required the scheduled maintenance kind of activities. And we cannot anticipate to what it will be. If we expect only purely on the service side, it will be 50% of the revenue over the, over the life of the product will be after sales market. Okay. And just last question. Uh, so I always ask you this that, you know, in defense side, we haven't received uh, on the marine uh, gas uh, because we have an edge on that. So defense segment as a whole in the industry is doing well. So can you expect uh, the for gas the num number to inflow in the next year or how do you see it, uh, the defense segment? And also, one, uh, are there any sectors where we have a high margin, where we can demand higher margin, maybe, you know, in steel or cement, or is it the same in all, across the sector? Uh, the margins uh, vary from uh, project to project and from customer to customer. So it's very difficult to uh, give you an answer on that. As long as Marine is concerned, uh, uh, marine orders come in spots, which means uh, they they come and then after a while there is a gap and then again they turn. Mm -hmm. But we are hopeful that uh, uh, a reasonable good quantity should be expected in the next year. Okay. And of the current order book, how much is to customize and how much is standard orders? Can we have a uh, highlight on that? Yeah, 55% is coming from uh, customized gears and uh, the balance is coming from uh, catalog gears. No, that's the, that's, that we have done in this quarter. I'm asking for the current order book of 525 uh, crores that we have right now. So is it the same number that is there or is it different? It would vary uh, slightly. 5% plus or minus. Uh, yes, 5% is the variation that you one expects from quarter on quarter. Uh, there could be fluctuations of those kind. Okay. Really? It also depends on how much of the, uh, the orders after received are produced in that particular quarter. Okay, okay, got it. Thank you so much and good luck to you and the team. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Deepak Purswani from Swan Investments. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, good evening, sir. And congratulations for good sale. Thank you. Uh, so just wanted to understand in terms of the export market, 
if you can show some light in terms of the growth in the nine months, because if I'm looking into the performance duty in a console and standalone uh, in the nine months, the difference between them uh, in terms of revenue is 258 crore, which is a 8% year on year growth. So how should we look into these numbers? And in terms of the export market, uh, I think at the beginning of the year, we were targeting somewhere close to 500 odd crores. So are we on track to achieve these numbers? Yes, we are on track to achieve these numbers. So we are expected, you know, some, uh, I mean, two, three, it was due to the elect, uh, due to uh, holiday period, both in India as well as overseas. And for the, that escalation of the, uh, escalation of Israel, Hamas, which has impacted the transport. So we are expected that in Q4, we are uh, able to achieve the target, what we have spelled out. Okay, and sir, can you please also share numbers for the nine months in terms of the growth for the export market? Growth for the export market. Yeah. You want the nine months export figures? Months. Export figures for the nine months. Is that what you want? Yeah. So we have, we have achieved 338 crore of our overseas business plus export from India. Against that, last year we did 326 crore. During the same nine months period. And so, in terms of the uh, order intake for the export market, uh, in the current order book, how much is the order intake for the export market? 80 crore. Indian rupees 80 crore. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Naisar Pare from Native Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi. Thanks for your question. Uh, the first one was... Uh, sir, may I request you to use your handset, please? You are not audible, yeah. sir. Sorry, is this better? Yes, sir. Please go ahead. Okay. So, directionally, you know, we are at 25% EBITDA margin. This is obviously uh, the highest for us. So, going forward, how do you see these margins? Do you think that, uh, you know, we peaked and we reinvest back or is there further scope to go up or uh, how do you, how should we look at the margin tra trajectory? I think 23, between 23 to 24 percent is a sustainable margin going forward. 23 percent minimum is a sustainable margin going forward for us and we can you know, optimize this to 24 percent. Okay, got it. And uh, second, uh, just in terms of, uh, you know, our uh, uh, capex plans i think you mentioned 100 crore each uh, but other than that uh, do we have to consider a larger capex plan uh, you know in the next taking a 3 4 year horizon and how do we think of that uh, we have no other plans except uh, consuming this uh, 100 crores each for the next three Okay, and at that capacity, what like at what capacity would that uh, leave us uh, generally in terms of revenue or something? See, we are expected that with this, uh, it should uh, take us to at least two thousand five hundred crores, and if required, if if additional uh, resources are required, we can even subcontract. Got it. All right. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, due to time constraint, this will be the last question. Our last question is from the line of Yashi Lohia from the Micro Cap Minute. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. So, I just have two questions. So, basically, the recent orders that you have... May I request you to use your handset, please? Um, am I, is it better now? Yes, ma'am. Please go ahead. Yeah, so thank you for the opportunity. I wanted to ask you the recent orders that we have got from energy division. Uh, 134 crores from the steam sector and 139 from the senior. So does our current order book include these or uh, when are we expecting it to be online? 
Now that last order which we received in January, which is of 83 crore, is not included in our order book, open order book position of 791 crore as of 31st December 2023. If we include that, my total order book position will be 874 crore. Okay. And um, so when are we like expecting it to go live? When are we expected to? Sorry, uh, can you repeat that again, please? Um, like when are we expecting it to realize? Realize. When can we expect this? Um, yes. Wasted second. So it will be realized by Q3 next year. That is invoicing. And okay. And uh, like if I see the gross profit margin this uh, quarter. It has decreased by 110 basis points year on year. So is this because of the, you know, can you share some light on why it has been? It is because of the product mix, because, you know, we are, due to change the product mix, you know, 100 to 150 base point will be always a plus or minus. We always give the guidance on the average out based on the annualized basis. It will even out before uh, the end of the next quarter. It is just that uh, it, it depends on what uh, orders you have executed and what uh, equipments are being uh, manufactured, which uh, varies the margins. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That was the last question of the question and answer session. I would now like to hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Thank you for participating in this call and expressing your interest in our company. We are strategically positioned to leverage opportunities in the domestic market and are actively exploring avenues internationally. As we progress on our path, we aim to reach new heights and achieve significant milestones. If you have further questions, please feel free to reach out to SGA or investor relations firm or our CFO, Mr. Narsiman Raghunathan, your participation is greatly valued. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of Alicon Engineering Company Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines.